This week I'd like to review this book. It is a rather large uh, interlinear entire Bible. It's the Interlinear Bible, Hebrew, Greek, and English, published by Hendrickson. Here's the spine. It has four boxes with burning bushes in each. Hendrickson Publishers. Interlinear Bible, Hebrew, Greek, and English on the spine, and the title on the front cover as well, with a single burning bush and multiple decorative lines impressed upon the on the on the cover. It's rather large. It's like eleven and an eighth inches tall, eight and three quarters inches wide, and about two inches thick to give you a sense for scale. Here's uh, George Rickerberry's Interlinear Greek English New Testament, and it is not nearly so tall, or as wide, or as thick. This book is a standard size hardback. It's the uh, A. Beg Flint and Ulrich Dead Sea Scrolls Bible. And again, shorter, not nearly so wide, but almost as thick. The uh, text here is in four columns. Two of the columns are translation columns, two are interlinear columns. The broad interlinear columns have um, the Hebrew or the Greek and the English and the Strong's numbers. So for instance here, here's the Hebrew, English with it, and then the Strong numbers are above the Hebrew words. It reads from right to left in the Old Testament and left to right in the New. These columns are 66 millimeters wide. Here in the Old Testament you can have as many as 66, uh, 26 lines per page. In the Greek, in the New Testament, because the Greek characters are smaller, you can have as many as 38 lines on a page. By a line I mean um, that combination of Strong's number, original language text, and the English translation. The two uh, narrow translation columns go with those interlinear columns. But this goes with this, and this column goes with this one. That goes with that. The translation columns are about 23 millimeters wide, and you can have as many as 98 lines per page you can have around 27 characters per line. Words that the translators supply are presented in italic font. Uh, here's an example. This him here, this of all there. Margins uh, vary a bit, but typically it's about 22 millimeters at the top and about 23 at the bottom from here down. This one seems to be printed a little bit unevenly north to south. The inner mar margin is only about 8 and the outer is about 13. Page dimensions are 276 millimeters tall, 214 wide. So in English units that's 10.9 inches tall and 8.4 inches wide. The font here in the translation is about 6 points. It's a sans serif font. It's very small. The lines seem to be spaced fairly well. The line height is about 2.2 millimeters, so that's 6.2 points. So the, uh, the character size seems to be fitting well with the line height. And I don't see any real difficulty there in terms of the lines being too closely fitted together. The verse numbers are along the edges of the interlinear columns and embedded in the paragraphs in the translation columns. The text is not line matched, but I do not think it matters. Um, paper is very thick and opaque. As we'll see, well, let's just show you some bold print up front. Very nice and bold part one. And then we'll show you that on the opposite side of the page. And you can barely see it. It's very opaque paper. Sheet thickness is about 87 microns. 
estimated paper weight is 80 GSM. It's a flat surface. There's very little reflectivity here. It's white. There's, uh, as we said, a very little show, show through. There is uh, some page to page you know, non uniformity. Some pages are printed darker than others. And then occasionally you'll find where the uh, printing is uneven across a column. So I'll show you that here on page 871 in my copy, where you can see it's grading from left to right, from dark to faint, getting uh, relatively faint. The farther to the right you go, darker to the left. Um, there are no book introductions. The books of the Bible do not generally start on their own page. Here, for instance, Acts is beginning at uh, the end of John. Acts starts here in the right-hand column. Book titles are given in the um, outside top, but the content information here is for the beginning of the page. So it's the beginning of the page, whether it's the left or the right. So this says John 21.14, and John 21.14 starts here. There's no information to tell you what the last verse on the page is. Similarly, on the left-hand page, John 20.14 is the first verse on that page. Page numbers are in the outside top as well. You just saw 840, and here's 841. There are no headings. Uh, you do have chapter numbers. So you have chapter written in all caps in both the interlinear column and in the translation column. In the Old Testament, in addition to chapter number here, um, you have this Latin, I believe that's kaput, and then you have a Roman numeral 12, and um, you also still have the chapter numbers in the interlinear column. As you can see there, chapter 11. In the New Testament, quite happily, the words of Christ are in black in all the columns. At uh, the beginning of the book, we have uh, a title page, and then a second title page that mentions that uh, we have Strong's concordance numbers above each word, and the editor and translator is J.P. Green, and the publisher, Hendrickson. We have the copyright page, and it has the standard Hendrickson warning at the bottom, and I do have Hendrickson's permission. Greek text is used with permission of the Trinitarian Bible Society, so this is a Textus Receptus New Testament. Contents, 49 Protestant Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books, and then two appendices, one on the majority text notes, and one called Jesus and the Old Testament. We have a guide to Hebrew and Greek alphabets. The uh, Hebrew alphabet guide tells you how to pronounce those characters. There's the Greek alphabet. And then the preface, and the most interesting thing in the preface is about the texts that they're translating. Hebrew text in the Old Testament is the Masoretic text, set in 1866 by the British and Foreign Bible Society. Greek text in the New Testament is the Received text, set by Stephen Austin and Sons for TBS in 1876, based on Scrivener's. 1894 text, and if I recall correctly, Scrivener is an update of um, Stephen's 1550, made to conform with the King James Version. They noticed that the Greek text differs slightly from other printed editions of the received text, and um, we'll take a look at the appendix that they mention here parenthetically in just a moment. Some words about the English translations, difficulties in the translation, 
difficulties in the Old Testament. Difficulties in the New Testament. Notes on the use of Strong's numbering system. And majority text notes at the back. And then you get to part one. We've seen that page before. Old Testament Hebrew and English. And there we go. So here we see the Strong's numbers. Here we see the Hebrew. And then the English runs under it. So it reads, uh, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and empty and darkness on the face of the deep. So there's no verb there. Spirit of God, etc. Let's look at the back, where we will find no maps and no concordance. We'll see here majority text notes, how to use them. The majority text notes are prepared by William Pierpont, and essentially what they do is they tell you how to move from the TR, which is printed here in this volume, to the majority text. So the way you would use that here is, for instance, in Matthew 4.18, where the Textus Receptus has Jesus, the majority text has nothing there. So a translation of the majority text would read he rather than Jesus. Um, another example, quite famous one, would be... Uh, let's see if we can find First John 5, 6 and 7. Uh, here, First John 5, 7 and 8, I mean to say. So the words here between in the heaven and in the earth, 25 words, are deleted in the majority text. So the end of verse, uh, 1 John 5, 7 and all of 1 John 5, 8 essentially are not in the majority text. They are in the Textus Receptus. Another example is here. In Revelation 22:19, where the Textus Receptus has book, the uh, majority text has tree. So that's how to use the, these text notes. It's very similar to the annotations in the New King James Version, only those annotations in the New King James Version are not comprehensive. There's two pages called Jesus in the Old Testament, and um, present facts. Uh, when Jesus quote, quoted the Old Testament, a list of those quotations, then some cardstock, and you're at the back of the book. Again, no maps, no concordance, uh, no ribbon marker. You do have uh, blue and white head and tail bands. You can also see the glue. I find no evidence of stitching for this book. I think it's a glued binding. The uh, so absolutely no guilting. So here we are in uh, Matthew chapter two, and I just wanted to show you a close-up of the text. This is um, chapter 2, verse 13 here, and in the English. And you can see that this is actually, although it's a six-point font, it's nicely spaced. It's printed rather boldly in a clean-looking font, so it's not hard to read. The text here is somewhat jumbled because of the Strong's numbers. There really isn't very much space between the lines, and um, you wouldn't want to try to read in this, I don't think. Uh, you would just simply use this to analyze reading uh, using the English as a, to, to, as a crutch to help you understand what the Greek is saying, and then using your Strong's Concordance to find out what Strong believed these words meant. Now I want to attempt to 
show a comparison of fonts, and it may not be easy to do, but I have uh, George Ricker Berry's interlinear here as well. So we'll show, if we can, we'll show the English against the English there on the left. And the Berry font, I think, is about a point larger. It's um, an older style font with a serif. But I believe it's a bit easier to read. Then here's Greek against Greek. A bit hard to see. But I don't know that I can do any better than that. Again, the Greek in the Berry edition, I think, is easier to read. Not simply because it's larger, but also because there is uh, some line spacing. It's a much less jumbled look on the right than on the left. Well, uh, to sum up, I would, I would describe this as a very large glued hardback with uh, excellent paper, excellent opacity. Um, it has the entire Bible printed in two English translations, plus the original text, plus the Strong's numbers. So um, it's a good resource. Apart from the fact that it's a glued binding, I really don't have any complaints about it. And minor issues with printing, but overall the printing is satisfactory. So that uh, just about sums up my, uh, my review of this book. If you've enjoyed it, um, please remember to like, and if you haven't subscribed and feel so inclined, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time.